So now we're going into the Grand Palace. Wow. I'm not sure what Frank's up to, I think he's going to get us on the train. Oh, okay, cool. Ah. This canal goes right around the whole thing. So that was pretty cool, the two, the two girls just wanted a photo with me. I don't know why, probably because I've got facial hair. But, uh, and because I'm foreigner. Look at the size 
Oh, yeah, close, yeah. The big bar that goes across it. Wow. Yeah. Frank's taking photos of me with the big bar. This thing bars across. The whole thing just huge big doors. Big archway locks it all off. I opened my jacket because uh, I wanted the New Zealand shot with the New Zealand uh, Wow. Huge big stones here. Look at these stones. Frank taking photos of me. Wow. Ah, yeah, ah, fresh. <laughs> wow. So we're at the east gate. That's the barrier to get in. Wow. This is, I think, the Grand Palace. This is just huge. Huge. Look at these stones. Just massive stones laid down. Hang on. Up there. Yeah? Unreal. Huh, thanks. I will take some video of yeah, yeah, yeah. Gate of Supreme Harmony. The front gate of the outer court was constructed in 1420 during the Ming Dynasty. Originally, it was named Feng Tianmen, Gate for Worshipping Heaven, but later it was renamed Hang Jimen, Gate of Imperial Supremacy. In 1535, the Antai uh, Himen in 1645 during the Qing Dynasty, it was burnt down in 1888 during the Qing Dynasty and was reconstructed in 1889 during the Qing Dynasty. 
Located on 3.4 meter high base, the gate was a gable roof and carved overhanging eaves. It is nine bays wide and four bays deep with an area of 1,300 square meters. It is the most magnificent gate in the Forbidden City. In front of the gate stand the largest pair of bronze lions in the palace. That's the one I had a photo with. The lions were cast in the Ming Dynasty. During the Ming Dynasty, the emperors held morning court and accepted memorials from officials here when Emperor Shunzi of the Qing Dynasty ascended the throne. He issued his first decree at this gate. What? The Palace Museum. Built in 1406. Wow. Unbelievable, man. Built in 1406, the Imperial Palace, popularly known as the Forbidden City, was the permanent residence of the emperors of the Ming and Qing dynasties. Its buildings are divided into two parts. Front part, outer court, consists of Tai He Dian Hall, Zhong He Dian Hall, and Bao Din Dian Hall, which were taken as its main body. Plus, when you Wing Dian Hall, which was taken as two wings, where the emperor held important ceremony. The rear part or inner court consists of Qin Qian Qin Gong Palace. Another hall. It's huge. It's just huge. Ah. Ah. Aha. Frank's gonna get me an English. <laughs> so this is the largest wooden building. So I've got a little uh, um, uh, earpiece on. There's Frank. Hey Frank! So these little beasts up here are always less than the, there's 11 on this one I think, and they're uh, to ward off um, uh, um, evil spirits, but they're also to help keep the, uh, the tiles on. So I've got a little earpiece on here that Frank got me and it's uh, tell, telling me all about everything and uh, wow and uh, as you walk along it's um, GPS so it just it starts a new one when you walk to a new spot. Unbelievable. Wow. This is huge. Like it's hard to believe how big it is. <laughs> wow. 
Wow, Frank. Very cool. <laughs> Unbelievable. Bronze vet. These were for, um, these are vets for yeah. water. Why <laughs> that? Okay. So those were um, carrying water for fire, for fighting fire. Well, Rick, I wish I kind of had your camera. My uh, video, my little cell phone uh, died. It, it ran out of space, I would think. So this is the Forbidden City. Uh, those vats were, um, they were all for carrying water. And uh, in the winter time, they put coals in so the water didn't freeze. And they were for, um, for uh, if there was a fire. So there are a lot of them all around the, the area. And those are, look at the size of this thing. It's just unbelievable. All gilt painted dragons on them. It's, uh, I just can't get over the size of it. It's just unbelievable to me. It's really cool. Really cool. Frank wants to take more photos of me and I want to get my camera away. So stand by. I just, it's a... <laughs> just a huge complex. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Just, there's not enough words to say. It's just stunning. All gilt, um, gilt paint and gold. Look at the detail on that. It's just amazing. Oh, this is like the central palace. This is where they lived. Look at those doors. Those are doors entering into the palace. This is where the emperor lived in here. This is like the main hall, I think. Lots of people here looking too, along with me. Yeah. Pretty cool. Very cool. Wow, Frank. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Here, 
Some of these statues are, are just, these bronzes are just unreal. Look at this guy, turtle. Bronze. Look at the gold over there on the building. And this one here, a crane. Hello. Round and shaped, this sundial is made of white marble stone. With graduations on both sides, the gnomons are made of iron and base of the dial is supported by four stone pillars. The dial is located on the base obliquely, parallel with the equator. The gnomons point to the north and south poles respectively. Sundial is a device which during hours of sunlight indicates time of day. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Indicates time of day. Uh, by shadow cast by Noman on a dial marked in hours. During the six months of the spring equinox to the autumn equinox, the graduations on the surface of the dial or to the north of the equator indicate the time and during the six months from the autumn equinox to the spring equinox the graduations on the back of the dial or to the south of the equator tell the time. The placing of the sundial in front of the hall symbolizes that the emperor had the highest power to grant, to grant time to all the people in the country. Wow, they were telling time thousands of years ago we didn't even know what the hell we were doing. Unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. Really cool. I just worried about the battery. Oh, yeah.